Welcome everyone. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to use Rosetta's antibody modeling feature to generate models of an antibody given the sequences of the variable regions of the light and heavy chains. This process would be a necessary first step in developing a model of an antibody bound to an antigen. First you need to get the structure of the antibody. Normally we start off by loading a structure, but this time we don't have a structure and need to predict it, so we can skip that step. Let's go over to the protocols menu and select the antibody modeler. This panel is pretty basic compared to some of the other protocols. All you need to do is specify the sequences of the variable heavy and light chains and indicate how many models you want returned. I already have a copy of the sequences I am interested in on the computer's clipboard. So let me do a control V to paste them in these text fields. The text box accepts fast to formatted sequences so you can paste directly from a file. Rosetta will only model the variable region of the antibody however. In the past, I mistakenly pasted the whole sequence of an antibody and Rosetta seemed to be able to recognize the constant regions and omit them properly, so if you forget to remove the constant sequences you are probably okay. Still, I would try to remove the constant region if possible to avoid unexpected behavior. Lastly we need to specify how many models we want Rosetta to return, currently you may specify any number between 1 and 100. Why would you want more than one model, doesn't that give me a lot of files to keep track of and use a lot of resources? Well keep in mind that the CDRH3 loop is hypervariable, so it is difficult for Rosetta to predict its confirmation, generating multiple models will give you an ensemble of predictions that sample a lot of possible confirmations of CDRH3. This is useful for, say, docking where you can use the returned ensemble as input for ensemble docking. When I am ready, I will click this immunize button. Yes, I do like being cute with button names every once in a while. This protocol will only run on an external server since I could not figure out how to use antibody modeling in Pi Rosetta, if you can even do it at all. This process actually doesn't take too long anyway, so you should have your results back fairly quickly as long as the server isn't busy with other jobs. If you go to the download manager you can see that the server is watching the antibody job. I will see you in about 15 minutes when the files come back. Okay, looks like our antibody job is all finished. Let's download that when prompted. So you'll see that I got 10 antibody models like I requested earlier. Here is what the first structure looks like. Looks like an FV structure to me. I also received an ensemble archive containing these 10 models. If I need to unpack the archive to get the 10 structures back at a later date, I can use the unpack feature of the ensemble generation protocol to get the structures back. I can also take that ensemble archive and use it in an ensemble docking protocol. I could use the first structure as the base model for docking and then upload the .ensb file for ensemble docking. Anyway, that's all there is to antibody modeling in Interactive Rosetta. I hope you enjoyed this video.